Welcome everyone to the 2022 Stage of the Foundation. Thank you for coming in person. I'm Heather Clothish, the current president of the Madison Library Found Public Library Foundation. Uh, board of Directors, so thank you so much for coming. I'd like to first recognize um, current and former board members. If you want to just stand up or give a wave to see some friendly faces out there, thank you. And also, um, current and former committee members, because we have people who want to serve on our committees as well. All right, thank you. Thanks for coming today. Um, we are so happy to share with you today uh, the accomplishments of the Library Foundation. You will hear about those a little bit later from our wonderful director, Jenny Jeffress. None of these accomplishments would have been possible uh, without the support of donors like all of, all of you. And as the library and the community's needs really changed extensively over the last couple of years, it was supporters like you who, who enabled us to ebb and flow with the needs of the community, and you were there at every turn. And so we're very, very grateful for that, and we'd like to celebrate that today. Um, we have, um, we appreciate the support we've had in the past, and we're gonna to continue to thank you, but we also have a lot of work to do now and in the future, as we're gonna talk about later on today as well. Um, we'd like you to hear directly from one of our fellow donors and supporters, Eve Galanter. Um, I have known Eve for many years through service, and I've always looked in awe of her passionate and unending dedication to our community. I was talking to Erin Olver, one of our board members earlier today, and I said, I think I've known Eve for 20 years. And I was um, very surprised because that's quite a long time, and I don't feel like I've been here that long. So. <laughs> um, Eve was appointed to the Madison Public Library Fund Board in 2017 and is serving her second term as the president of the library board. Eve founded the Wisconsin Civics Game, a statewide competition on civics knowledge for high school students as a part of her work on the Wisconsin Newspaper Association's foundation. She is the former president of Galanter Public Affairs Consulting. She served on the Madison City Council and was formerly the director of U.S. Senator Herb Cole's Madison office. As chair of the Wisconsin Women's Network, she spearheaded the creation of the, women's, women, of the Wisconsin Women's Policy Institute the first nonpartisan advocacy training program with the goal of increasing the number of female leaders in public policy. Eve currently also serves on the boards of PBS Wisconsin, Cap Times Kids Funds, Tempo Madison Foundation, and the Monroe Street Arts Center. So now you understand what I said about passion and unending dedication. Eve, please join us. You are indeed a force for good. when they're no longer here. That's, that's for other people. That's the future that we do think about but don't want to think about. On the other hand, it's really important to me that those things about which I am passionate and to which I've devoted time, that I can continue to have those organizations, those missions sustained well after I'm no longer here to sort of grab people and say, hey, have you heard about? And the library is clearly so very important to me. I'm going to just tell you briefly about a statement that I wrote or share with you briefly a statement that I wrote about our library staff in terms of uh, in uh, on the occasion of National Library Week and just a portion of it because it's why I believe our libraries are so important to all of us both for now and to ensuring that they're here for our kids and our grandkids and those that we can't even imagine at this point. 
Libraries help our communities stay connected, whether it's in search of a job or the latest bestseller, with programming for our youngest card holders or our more senior card holders, where research questions get answers and the latest videos and movies can be brought home to share. A place for quiet and a place for celebration and always, and this is so important, place for discussion of ideas. Libraries are our community connectors, and I want to do everything I can, and the foundation is here to ensure that that will happen in the future to keep those connections strong. So thank you for all, all of you do, and for helping us to make those connections. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Jenny Chaffris, I'm the Executive Director of the Library Foundation, and I have a Silas Penny Legacy Society pin to give to Eve Glander, who has uh, told us about her planned gift that includes the foundation, and so she gets to wear that pin. I also have one for Robert Lupin. I don't think you've ever gotten yours yet. <laughs> Thank you, Eve. Thank you. Wear that thank with you. pride. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Um, we're going to go into the presentation now. So even though it's 2022, we're talking about 2021. And we're going to kind of give you the highlights of our year, um, the things that the foundation worked on and funded. And what I hope you leave here with is feeling really good about your gifts, about your involvement as a volunteer, your involvement as a donor. Um, so that you feel like your dollars made a big difference. Because I think uh, what you'll see here today will make you feel that way. So Connor's gonna dim the lights and we're gonna get started. So we're gonna talk about how in 2021, libraries were a force for good. Um, in, this, in 2021, the first half of the year, libraries were still closed. We were not back in our offices. Um, but the foundation board decided to undertake a strategic planning effort. We had a strategic plan, but we felt like when COVID came down the pike and we were in the midst of a pandemic, it wasn't relevant to some of the things that maybe we were addressing right now. So we worked with an outside consulting firm and we worked on a new strategic plan. And part of that effort, we did come up with an updated uh, mission and vision for the foundation. And what I want to say we focused on a lot is that we exist for donors to make gifts to the library. And so we really are there, mobilized was the word we kind of came up with, but that's really the, the impact we have is that we take interest from the community, we bring it to the library and direct it to the library in the way that they need it most. The other thing I think we talked about kind of in the vision statement is that we also still exist to support programs, services, and facilities. If you look around the country, not a lot of foundations actually support facilities or libraries. Um, we typically do participate in capital campaigns and renovation projects, and that's just part of our, our overall goal and our vision process. So we wanted to make sure that we kind of directed that and still talked about that as one of our visionary statements. The other thing uh, we worked on was our kind of core values. Um, the one I particularly want to point out on this one actually is advocacy. So in 2021, um, we talked quite a bit about advocacy, what it meant to be on the foundation board, what role we could play um, in advocacy, um, and it certainly came up during the course of the year. Um, as we got towards the end of 2021 and we were doing a library budget, the library board actually asked us for advocacy on behalf of the Monroe Street Library. We were asked to take a 5% budget cut, as all city departments were, um, and what that means often in the library system is that we lose hours or we lose staff. And so uh, the library board asked for our help. We asked uh, donors and our board to get more involved and they served in an advocacy role, kind of reaching out and making sure that the community voice was heard um, about our library hours and staff and the things that uh, the community service that we really wanted to protect. So that was a big part of what we do. The other thing I would mention here is leadership. So I think the, the Library Foundation Board discusses a lot how we can support things that 
that helped make the Madison Public Library a leader. Um, recently, I had actually somebody who works, who's a donor at the Madison Community Foundation came back to me from visiting a town in Nebraska. And she said she went into a public library in a small town in Nebraska, they asked her where she was from, and she said, Madison, they're like, we just started this maker program because we heard about the Butler program at Madison Public Library. So it's the type of experience like that where we have somebody come back and tell us a story of the influence we have as a leader, of, of uh, taking risks, of inventing new things to provide public service. Um, and that's a big part of what we want to support and what we want to do as a foundation is help making the Madison Public Library a leader. Now, the Madison Public Library, this is their strategic lens. Um, they've used this for a number of years. I think those who have been on the library board cannot agree that this is a, kind of how the library makes decisions and comes up with strategies, is they put it through this lens. And that's kind of how they kind of keep their focus um, from year to year, is make sure that it fits into the strategic lens in their decision-making process. So we're gonna start with how the foundation helps make connections for the library. In 2021, we were closed uh, for half the year. So it's a kind of weird year of curbside appointments and library visits. So you'll see them both here. Curbside was a big part of what we did. One of the things that the foundation did was get bags for curbside delivery. At first, uh, in 2020, we had them donated from Quick Trip and Woodman's. And then at the beginning of 2021, we bought like 25,000 bags um, that they kept using for curbside delivery. So it's like a, the kind of donation that just helps facilitate what the library needs to do to stay connected to the community. And so that's one of the things we help to do. Um, Library visits at all nine of our libraries were a little over a half a million. I think we felt like it was relatively modest as people started to come back. I know I've seen Sybil in the library quite a bit when I've run into her downstairs, all masked and picking up her holds and ready to go. But I think um, here in 2022, we're actually seeing an increase in visitation even more. So I think it's, it's something I'm sure you've all experienced in a lot of your public interactions is people are just starting to get more comfortable with coming back. And so I think we'll, we'll see a lot of increases, both in the materials checked out and in the library visits as we go through the next coming year. Um, so we reopened on May 24th. Oh, there's Brian Brown in one of our photos um, over at the Sequoia Library. Uh, but I think it, we're excited to be open again. We are excited to be back serving the public. One of the things the foundation did support, though, was help making the libraries safe spaces to come back to. Uh, we purchased plexiglass um, shields for things. Uh, we helped to provide masks. We helped to provide um, more hand sanitizer stations, self-checkouts at several of our libraries we helped to support. So we were really uh, trying to find ways to help support our staff to feel comfortable and provide a safe space for our patrons to come back to as well. I think the other thing, though, that we have to understand the library really did a lot was reaching out into the community during that time. So it wasn't just that we were expecting everybody to come back, but during the course of the year, both uh, while we were still doing curbside and during the summer, we did a big partnership with the Parks Department and actually did a lot of public service of community programs in our parks um, as people were starting to feel more comfortable with coming back out, but being outside was maybe a little safer and a little easier. Um, last summer. So one of the other things that we do quite a bit of is that we raise restricted money for programs. So this is kind of the donor restricted money for the last year was about this much. Um, that includes gifts for things like our book festival as well as things like our dream bus. So I mentioned the Bubbler previously. Bubbler staff were supported by city taxpayer dollars through the library budget. But the artists that they bring in and the, and the supplies and materials for the projects are supported by the foundation. So this last year, you can actually see Trent's quote up there. They took a different approach to hiring an artist team. And instead of having like an artist for a month or two months in a residency, they actually hired a group of artists for six months. Um, so the artists that they hired are pictured up there. Um, I'm just going to tell you kind of what uh, artistic areas they represented which included video, performance, sculpture, photography, dance, woodworking, and furniture making. So a huge variety. 
um, of artistic talents that they uh, brought forward and participated with our community. The other photo over there is actually our Penny Studio. So that is our artist in residence at the Penny Library, who was there uh, since we reopened last May. Um, and she does a paper making and a storytelling collage work uh, with paper making. And so what, it's so great to have that Penny Library reopen. It was open for four days before we had to shut down for the pandemic. So the fact that it, it reopened to a very happy group of people who had been waiting for that new library to come back open. And so the residency has been a fantastic way for people to come in. It's right as you enter the Penny Library that you go by the studio. Um, and Amelia, um, Maria Amelia Wood is an artist, and she's actually doing a project for us this coming year, making a B-cycle bike with her artistic work on it. So, and we're gonna talk about our B-cycle work in a few minutes. Making Justice is another program that we fund every year, uh, providing artists who work with kids who are in the juvenile detention system. Um, so we also expanded that service beyond the juvenile detention system this year to work with Briar Patch Youth Services. Briar Patch supports runaway, homeless, and at-risk youth in Dane County. They also have a restorative justice program that offers court-involved teens alternative paths to the justice system that is focused on equity. So uh, we are working more with Briar Patch this year as well. Um, one of the other things they started this year, besides some of the mural projects, those are actually at the shelter home. Um, and Autofax was actually the artist who worked with the youth at the shelter home. We also started a shoe design workshop and, and gave that a try with our kids in our Making Justice program. Hugely successful, and we actually got funding in 2022 to expand the shoe design workshop. So um, the youth are very excited about working on that. Our dream bus did not slow down in 2021. We had almost 4,000 visits um, with our dream bus. So the dream bus is a partnership between Dane County Library Services and the Madison Public Library, and it goes to communities in Madison where we have poor access to libraries. So because of transportation or you know, busy roads to cross or just geographic areas where it's difficult uh, for folks to get to a library, that's where our dream bus goes. So it goes to places like Kennedy Heights Community Center, Sandberg Elementary, uh, Wisconsin Youth Center, over by Elver Park, Allied Drive Learning Center. Um, and we also, you can see there's a picture here of Forward Madison. So the dream bus also partnered with the Forward Madison soccer team and we did, they did a cross promotion, <coughs> excuse me, and that cross promotion meant that the Dream Bus was at a number of soccer games over the course of the summer and reached a lot of families that way, but we also did a, a youth writing contest and the foundation provided a cash award for the youth uh, writing winner um, and the soccer players were a part of giving that award to the youth, so it was an excellent opportunity to encourage youth writing to really engage kids in kind of literary process but also get the dream bus out into the community uh, parents as first teachers is another program that we raise private money for each year we partner with the department of public health and they send visiting nurses into homes where children are zero to two years old and so we've prepared literacy kits and done training with the nurses about how to talk to parents about reading to young children, how important that is for their brain development, and providing them with other resources. So some of the, the great things is, is they're multilingual kids. We have a lot of different books in different languages. The books go to that child's home and they stay there forever. That's part of their home collection. Um, but they also now have song books in English and Spanish. There's mini maker kits that go in these bags to these homes. Um, and there's also like literacy handouts that talk about why it's important to read to young children. So this is a program that we fund those kits. You can kind of see them um, in the photos there and we make sure those get into the youngest kids' homes. Um, back to capital projects. So Hawthorne Library over on East Wash, we just renewed the lease of that library last year. As part of that, they, uh, the lease holder actually was making a few improvements and we decided to expand on that with both public dollars and private dollars. 
So that included replacing the carpeting, getting a fresh coat of paint. We removed this like soffit on this wall that blocked all the natural light in the children's area and got rid of that, which makes a huge difference. Um, we added LED lighting to the entire library. We reupholstered chairs, added a laptop bar, put in teen furniture that includes some high top tables and some kind of low comfy seating, and put a family computer desk in as well. So those dollars were provided by a couple private donors um, who aren't here tonight, but uh, Rhonda and Phil Plord and Miriam Simmons provided private dollars for that. And then we also had a donor who at year end gave us funds to provide computer tasks for the entire Hawthorne Library. So we're in the process of purchasing those now, um, which will be a great refresh to a very well used library um, over on the east side. So our grants committee, which kind of works with our unrestricted funds and figures out how to give them to the library, really tries to focus on equity and innovation. How can we fund things that focus on equity and innovation? Um, through these unrestricted funds, we had $759,000 that were given out last year. Um, most of that came from our annual fund money. It comes from Ex Libris, and it also comes from our endowment distribution. So that's where all that money comes from. Um, to go to those places. There's three areas we typically give out every single year, technology, collections, and professional development. Um, so I'm going to tell you some of the things that we bought with the collections money. Audio-enabled picture books, book club kits, board books, large print books, and juvenile world language. We also bought equity and social justice books as well. Um, on technology, we, produced inter we purchased intercom systems for the doorbells back when we were doing curbside, so people could actually ring a doorbell. We didn't have anything like that. Uh, Self-checks for the nursery library, public printers for the Goodman South Madison Library, um, and we also purchased Zendesk software, which helped our reference librarians field, reference librarians field calls and email inquiries and chat inquiries about reference materials. And we also purchased Zoom subscriptions for staff. Um, and then on the professional development, um, here's some of the impact of those funds. 44 staff were trained in suicide prevention strategies. 13 staff attended the YWCA's Regional Justice Summit. Six staff members took a reference course through the American Library Association. Six attended Digipalooza, which is to brush up on Overdrive knowledge, our downloadable book uh, system. And eight staff members attended the Anal Vice Book Fest. So we get a lot of people who get a lot of impact about our professional development dollars. Another big grant that we gave was $150,000 to this project called Amplifying Community Voices. And the big idea there is to enable the public to participate in city meetings and interactions without necessarily going to the city county building or going to a city council meeting, especially during the time when they were not having city council meetings. So we actually worked on improving the technology here to make that possible, and then with the goal of taking that out to the nine other libraries over time to make community interaction and question asking and interaction on a, on a public meeting possible from different parts of the city. This has been an especially um, significant thought as we think about the Imagination Center that we're working on on the east side, which has very few city resources near their neighborhood at all. So we're really thinking about how do we take city resources into the community and allow the public to interact without having to come downtown to be part of the public process. So that's also, the, uh, the city is also partnering with Dane County. They got an additional grant to take that to another library. So um, we're excited about that as well. Our grants committee also has a mini grant. So these are gifts of $5,000 or less, but somehow some of these gifts have some of the biggest impact of some of the gifts uh, that we talk about during the year. So one of them here, the kind of top picture, is our BIPOC affinity group, which enriches the lives of MPL staff of color through networking, professional development, and community service. We supported their one-year anniversary event. Um, we also have Andy Cloud up there, who is our Native American storyteller. She did programming throughout the fall. You can see her at the Pitney Library and then doing a mini moccasin workshop at the library there. And that was a really meaningful program and really, I think, deepened the library's relationship with the Ho-Chunk Nation. 
And then we also have our We Read bags. So we do in English and Spanish. Uh, we gave a $5,000 gift uh, to purchase the bags that would go in all nine of our libraries. The bags were gone so fast. <laughs> we, we really need to purchase more next time because I think people loved uh, being able to take home their books in those bags. So those are the type of mini grants uh, that um, come through the grants committee that we can make a big difference with in the library community. And we have Eve here pictured on her B-cycle. So um, the Library Foundation has had a relationship with B-cycle for a number of years, I think ever since trying to get the B-cycle station outside of Central here back in 2013. Um, but we also opened a new station at the Penny Library. We're super excited. Uh, that's the furthest east side station. So kind of past Old Botanic Garden, that's the next east side station. So um, it really adds access. It's right off the bike trail. It serves um, commuters in the area, but we're really excited to have that outside the Finney Library. The foundation also supported the purchase of an artistic bike, this We Read bike that's around the community. It actually was the most um, socially track, like of all the different um, artistic bikes that went out there, this had kind of the most social media of all the bikes. Like everybody loved We Read bike. Emily Balsley, who designed the We Read logo, actually did the bike design. So we're really excited to have that out in the community. If you see it and are on it, maybe take a picture and send it to us. Um, and then, and Stonehouse Development actually is the sponsor of the bike station out at the Penny Library as well. Um, and finally, I want to mention the community pass. So that's actually a really significant partnership with B-Cycle. We worked with B-Cycle to establish a free community pass for B-Cycles that you could check out with your library card. You don't have to pay for it. You can get a free bicycle helmet, and you can have a free fob to use for a week for any bicycle throughout the city. So we're really excited. They tried this in one other community in the country, and it went really well. And so we decided to put it on here. And our librarians gave us great feedback about people using this program and being really excited to have access to a bicycle. I think this summer, it'll probably be even more given gas prices. <laughs> Yeah, people will really be wanting to find other ways to commute. Um, and we're happy to support that, all nine libraries. And if it goes well, we can increase the number of passes. We have two passes at each library, um, but we could certainly get more if there is community demand. But we're really excited to have introduced that program. Um, I do want to mention the Wisconsin Book Festival. Connor Moran is here, who directs our book festival. Another weird year of half virtual and half in-person events. Um, but I think what the numbers say, though, is we had over 16,000 people participate in Wisconsin Book Festival events. So they were not uh, they were not being turned away. They were coming for author events, whether it was in person or online. So we were able to access fantastic authors who really turned out wonderful crowds. Uh, we did host a partially live book festival with one in-person day in the fall. Um, and we have kept doing live events this spring. So it continues to be one of the public programs that has continued 100% throughout the pandemic that never went away. Um, and I think the library appreciates that continuity and the access to authors um, that we continue to be able to provide by supporting the Wisconsin Book Festival. Wisconsin Book Festival is 100% privately supported. So we get library space and resources, but Everything else is paid for by us. Um, we had enough funds actually to pay for 2,475 free books to people who came to events. So I hope some of you may have uh, seen a, a free book. Um, but it was really a fantastic year for the book festival. We're excited for 22. We have a lot of great authors coming up, so check out the Wisconsin Book Festival website. Um, Azarna PC just had a great article in yesterday's paper. Um, about her upcoming program on May 10th, and we have James Patterson coming in June um, here, so some really fantastic authors coming live and in person that you can enjoy. <coughs> Finally, I just want to mention a couple of our events. So we do our educational series events. These are the events that we hosted in um, 2021. The gerrymandering and voter suppression had the biggest audience of all of them, but not surprising. But um, so did cybersecurity. And everybody who presents on these are volunteers in our community. So fantastic people who give us their time, do a virtual presentation. And we have many donors and library patrons who really enjoy this educational series. And I think we can provide some great content through some of our volunteers. 
I think uh, we also have a plan giving subcommittee who kind of helps plan that. I don't think any of them are here right now, but I did want to recognize their, their work on our behalf. So we also do two other events. We do our Lunch for Libraries, um, which was virtual with Carl Hyacinth, the author, in 2021. We have 537 attendees. And the Lunch for Libraries supports the book festival. About $40,000 of net proceeds go to support the book festival. And then the rest of the funds go to youth literacy efforts. And so the cute little pictures I'm showing you of these like rainbowy things are some of the play materials that were involved with the $36,000 that went to youth literacy. So these are the We Play materials that support the We Read materials and are in all nine of our libraries. The little play kits on the right, the baby play kits, are actually little zippered pouches. So if you're a parent and say you're taking a young child in and you're gonna work on your resume in a study room, the librarian will give you this little play kit that you can take into the study room with you that your young child can play with. So this is the type of thing that the Lunch for Libraries proceeds supported in the last year. Our library staff are incredibly grateful to have wonderful materials to interact with the books in all of the early childhood areas of the library. We also had our Ex Libris, which was in person. So uh, I think we just um, came before Omicron started to hit, thank goodness. And we had a great event. We had, I think it's 393 people there, a wonderful event with uh, lots of new restaurants. We took a new approach, we call it New Recipe, and we really wanted to make sure we diversified uh, the, both the brewers and the uh, restaurants that participated in our event. And we had a very conscious and deliberate effort to do that, and I think it was one of our best events ever. So we really had a fantastic year. You can see the band is playing, and it, it's always a fun event, and that, that unrestricted money goes into our grants program as well. So finally, I just want to talk about our endowment. Um, it was a great year for the endowment, in part because the market was good, in part because we take 10% of our annual fund proceeds every year and put it into the endowment, and in part because we take any unrestricted bequests and we add those to the endowment as well. So that's the way our endowment grows. It actually grew by 1.25 million in 2021. So a really strong growth for our endowment, which is held over at the Madison Community Foundation. We have 15 funds over there. We have one for each of our nine libraries, but we also have some for like large print books and um, professional development and a scholarship fund. So a number of endowments over there held at Madison Community Foundation. Each of the nine libraries gets a distribution each year from its endowment, and these are some of the things they, they bought with their distributions. Pitch, popular picture books, teen interns, the seed library was pictured up there with those little boxes. Over a thousand packets of seeds were given away. Um, DVDs, end cap shelving, movie licenses, book trucks, new signage, a copy scan fax machine, and a whiteboard, and more. So lots of different things are purchased for those endowment distributions. So here's our current nine libraries situated throughout Madison, but we also hired an urban planner several years ago and identified a location for our Imagination Center, which will be in an area of Madison that is poorly served by libraries. You will be hearing a lot more about the Imagination Center in the coming year. We are just heading into the schematic design phase with the plan of opening this library in 2025. Um, it is a parks and library facility with a four season park shelter as well as a public library in Rhinel Park. And if you uh, follow kind of civic news, it's about a half a block from the new men's shelter that is also being built on the east side, um, right on the, the outside of Rhinel Park there. So we're very excited to work on this project. You'll hear a lot more about it. Um, but it is something we are all uh, working behind the scenes on at the moment. And then finally, I just want to share our financials. Um, these are probably really small for you to see. We do have the annual reports in the back, the summaries, where you can look at these in greater detail. This is the foundation summary in terms of expenditures and uh, uh, money spent on programs as well. And this is the Madison Public Library, which shows its $21 million annual budget, most you know, all of which is supported by the city um, with us kind of filling in gaps where we need to. 
But if you have any questions about that, I'm very happy to answer them. And finally, I just want to say thank you. You, the donors, are the force behind the Madison Public Library Foundation. We exist to be that resource that helps you put dollars towards something great happening at your Madison Public Libraries. Thank you so much for coming today, for helping us kind of mobilize your support to make our Madison Public Libraries better. I'm going to say we still have some food and we still have some drink. I managed to like talk only 30 minutes, which is kind of amazing. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. And if there's library questions, if Eve can't answer them, uh, we will take notes and give them to Craig. So please take some food and drink. And finally, if you look on the back of your chairs, one of you at your table has a green sticker. And whoever has the green sticker gets the centerpiece. And so we have a little black container you can put the centerpiece in and take it home. So we hope you will do that because we don't need all these flowers around the office. We'd rather you take them home. So please enjoy them. And know that the annual report, the full annual report, is available on our website. So while you receive the summary here, the digital report is available up on the Mass Public Library Foundation website. Thank you. So I was told I had a I just did. Great. Good job. Well done.